This is flipped lecture number 22 on night section 9.4, which is springs and work done by springs. Knight calls this restoring forces. And if you're getting bored with friction and springs, I understand a little. They're not that exciting, except that they do really illustrate these concepts. And let me assure you that if you're more excited about electronics, that mastering this stuff actually really matters to you. And I'll just tell you that friction in a mechanical system plays the same role as resistance does in an electrical system. And springs in a mechanical system play the same role as capacitors. So master this stuff and you will be well on your way to understanding uh, circuits that involve uh, resistors, capacitors, and uh, later on I'll explain you a little more some other fancy thing called an inductor. Springs and work done by springs. Well, we've all seen springs. Here's a wall. Here's a spring attached to the wall. Let's not worry about the spring being going up or down. Let's just worry about what happens when we compress the spring and what happens when we pull the spring. So the number one thing about a spring is if you just let it go, it has a certain natural length. Okay, so let's imagine that this spring has a certain natural length, L. Now, if I press on this spring and cause it to compress a little bit, maybe I'll redraw that here, okay? I just compressed this spring a little bit. And now its end is here. And the amount I've compressed it is an amount delta x. And since I've moved uh, in the leftward direction, in this drawing here, delta x actually represents a negative number, if that's x and that's y. So if I compress the spring a little bit, it's going to push back on me. So the force produced by this spring, if I compress it a little bit here, is going to be positive. Contrast that. What happens? I'm going to erase all this. I'm going to make the spring a little bit longer than its natural length. So here. And now it's been pulled out to there. And let's draw our coordinate system again. There's the positive x direction and there's the positive y direction. And now delta x represents a positive quantity. And this time though, in order to do this, you had to pull on this spring this direction. It's pulling back on you. So here, the F, the force that the spring is creating, is actually pointing to the left. And if you asked what its component in the x direction was, here you would say that Fx is less than zero. So to summarize those two situations, we and when delta x, the spring was elongated was greater than zero, then fx was less than zero. It was pulling to the left. And of course, at the rest position, which is when delta x is equal to zero, that's fx equal to zero. When the spring's at rest, it's neither pulling. When the spring's at its natural length, it's neither pulling nor pushing on whatever it's attached to. And so this is why this is called a restoring force, because when x gets less than zero, the spring pushes right. And when x is zero, the spring doesn't do anything. And when x is greater than zero, the spring pulls back left. In other words, it's trying to restore itself somehow to its natural position. We model this as the spring's force as a function of delta x, the amount that it's displaced from its natural position is minus, that's the restoring part, some constant that we call k times delta x. This is all multiplied by i hat. 
or a lot of times we just leave all that off and look at the x component, in which case we have that. So that's the situation for a spring. And this idea, this model of a spring, it's not a law. It's a model. And we call this model, <laughs> as if it were a law, we call it Hooke's Law. So that's springs. Work done by springs is the one remaining thing that I want to do. Here's the question that I want to answer. What is the work done by a spring as it goes from an amount delta x initial relative to its rest position to an amount delta x final? Let's make our lives a little easier. Let's measure the position of the spring from its rest unstretched or uncompressed, its natural position. So that means I can drop all these deltas here. X equals zero is gonna to correspond to the unstretched or uncompressed spring. So now let me restate the question. We want to find out how much work the spring does as it, it goes from x initial to x final. And of course, we know that because in the last flipped video, we got the absolute general formula for the work according to night number 9.10, and that's the integral from the initial value to the final value of f in the s direction ds. But now this spring here is one of these situations where the only direction we're going to have to worry about is the x direction. So this is x initial to x final of f sub x dx. That's going to be the work done by the spring. All right. Let's use our Hooke's Law formula. Our Hooke's Law formula said that... The force that is generated by this spring is F sub X is equal to minus KX. So let's punch that in. We've got the integral from X initial to X final of minus KX DX. Of course, K is a constant. That's the constant that came from Hooke's law. So that can come out front. Now we've got the integral from an x initial to x final of x dx. The integral of x dx is actually one I mentioned a couple of flipped lectures back. Uh, integral of x dx is x squared over 2. So that's k times x squared over 2. And again, we need to uh, put in the limits of integration. This is evaluated from x final to x initial. So this is minus 1 half kx final squared plus one half kx initial squared. Now you might want to, as always, compare with what Knight said. And Knight said almost exactly the same thing if you look at 9.25. The only difference is he called his coordinate s, so he's got s's all over the place instead of x's. And he didn't make his life easy by taking the origin of coordinates to be the natural rest position of the spring. So he has to have delta s's all over the place, where by delta s he means the, dis the amount that the spring has moved from its natural position and since I chose the natural position to be zero, I don't have deltas all over the place. Other than that, uh, notational difference, there's 100% agreement. And that is 9.4.